In our latest video series, we've taken you behind the scenes to show you all the little nitty gritty details that it takes to manufacture in ground fiberglass swimming pools. And today, it's time to show you how they go in the ground. I'm Christian with River Pools. This is episode seven of how fiberglass pools are made. We're not on the new plant, we're on the job site. More precisely, this is how fiberglass pools are installed. So you understand how fiberglass pools are made, and after today's video, you're gonna understand how they are installed. We're gonna go over two big areas of information in today's video. The latter is going to be all of the components that make up our current installation methodology. So that you understand the importance to each one of those components, you need to hear the backstory. Specifically, I'm going to address all of the problems we encountered over the years that led to the development the River Pools Way fiberglass pool installation methodology. You know, right before we began to shoot this scene, I was asked point blank, Christian, are you sure you want to talk about the problems on camera with fiberglass pools? Yes, that is exactly what I want to do. You see, it's the problems homeowners experienced with their fiberglass pools and the challenges we faced as pool builders for all those years, long before we began manufacturing pools. Because we would return to the home time and time again to deal with these issues. And there were four of them in particular that caused the most grief for homeowners. Number one, plumbing leaks that occur right at the return fitting. What would happen right here is that this pipe would be pulled down, it would be unsupported and pulled and sag over time. Well, this racking of that fitting right there would ultimately crack the return fitting itself or the plumbing fittings that take it to the supply line and cause a leak right here at the point where water is supposed to be entering back into the pool. Now, what would cause such a thing? Sand. Sand was used as a backfill material and is still used as a backfill material by builders all across the country for fiberglass pools. But the problem with sand is that it can settle over time, especially when it gets saturated with groundwater, when it gets saturated with groundwater, and it can leave the plumbing unsupported. Number two, settlement of the pool itself. Once the pool is placed in the hole, we determine the height of the coping to match wherever the decking needs to land so that all of the landscaping works. Well, if the height of this pool at any point shifts once the pool is set, my friends, that's a problem because it leads to settlement elsewhere on the decking. It also changes the water line in your pool. The culprit here again is sand. Again, when it gets saturated, it can actually shift and move around causing the pool itself to shift and move. Number three, bulges in the sidewall of your pool. When water is introduced, groundwater, to that sand, it's going to shift and move. And if it shifts and moves in such a way that it puts undue pressure on the outside of the pool wall, it can actually generate a bulge in the pool wall. And lastly, separation of the pool from the patio. If the pool shifts or the patio heaves, if anything happens and the patio itself separates from the pool, you can have quite a gap that begins to show. Or the pool itself shifts away and the patio edge itself, the coping of the patio, gets pulled back. We don't want this coping to ever separate from the pool. Next, let's get into the River Pools way and show you all of the components that go into this installation methodology. To be sure, none of these problems are ever a concern of yours. So, 
The first component to the River Pools Way installation method is to set the base properly for the pool. What we do is we overdig about four inches and then we fill that void with clean crushed angular stone because water is going to flow freely through this material and it will never settle. So the problem this addresses is that the pool itself will never settle and shift from its original position once it's set in place. The guys are finalizing the base for the pool right now. And while they're doing that, let's go take a look at exactly why we use crushed stone as opposed to sand, which is used so many other places in the industry for setting fiberglass pools. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate what happens to these two materials when groundwater is introduced. But I want to ask you a question. The last time you were at the beach and you walked close to the water, what happened to that sand when you stepped on it? It moved exactly when it gets wet. When this material becomes saturated, it will move and shift wherever the water wants to take it. Not the case with angular stone. I actually have a sump pump in the bottom of the hole that is going to pull groundwater out through this hose and we're gonna pour it directly onto this pile and then this pile and I'm gonna show you exactly what happens when groundwater is introduced to these two materials so that you can see exactly why we use clean crushed angular stone to install every single one of our fiberglass pools. If this material is used as the base for your fiberglass pool and groundwater, when groundwater is introduced, your pool is not going to shift, unlike when sand is used. So what I want to point out here is that groundwater began to enter this hole as we were digging in this particular location, and it was coming out here. This is not a natural spring, but there was groundwater that was trickling into the hole itself. And you can see that it's washed the dirt, the soil, into the hole itself. Now, where we are on this particular job site, the soil is very sandy. And so it just easily washed back into the hole. Now, imagine if your builder was using clean sand to set up the base and use this backfill material around your pool and water gets introduced. This stuff is going to shift a lot. So there's another example down here where groundwater is constantly entering the hole. Let's go take a look at what it's doing to the soil in that location as well and compare it to the stone. So down here in the deep end of where the pool is going to set, there's actually groundwater constantly entering the hole. I'm literally watching it come out of the bottom of the hole right here. Let's take a look with my phone. You can see water just constantly entering the site. But what's it doing to the sandy soil right here? It's moving it everywhere, except where there's stone. This water is rising and lowering in the stone, and that's not shifting, which is exactly why we use it as a base and backfill material for your fiberglass pool. Stone is element number one in the River Pool's way of insta installing fiberglass pools. Four inches of a base is exactly what your pool needs. All right, we've talked about the clean crushed stone as the base of the pool. Let's talk about elements two, three, and four for the River Pools Way fiberglass pool installation method. We're gonna to continue to use this material, clean crushed stone, to backfill versus sand. Now, what problem are we solving there? We are eliminating the risk of bulges in the sidewall occurring because the material is shifting due to groundwater. Remember, based on the demonstration you just saw, Groundwater can move freely throughout this material and do whatever it is that it needs to do. Because of its angular nature, as soon as this is placed in the hole, it actually compacts on impact as it lands as backfill material. Let's talk about component number three, which is two inch rigid PVC plumbing. Now this seems like an obvious thing and you're probably asking, Christian, it looks like the perfect material. Are there any other options? There are pool builders out there that are using flexible PVC plumbing, but the problem with flexible PVC is that it's not really supported once water gets in it and the weight begins to draw down on that material, putting undue pressure 
on the return fittings themselves. It makes it very hard to support the plumbing. Flexible PVC is not rated for underground use like rigid PVC is. So component number three in the Riverpool's way of installing pools is rigid PVC plumbing. Let's go to the next element. We're gonna support this plumbing with plumbing straps. You have plumbing straps to add redundancy to the system. The problem we're trying to prevent here is cracks in the return fittings. We don't ever want this plumbing to shift because remember, if this plumbing sags over time, it will it'll turn and rack that fitting right here and cause a crack. This is where 95% of the leaks in pools in the past were occurring right here because sand was used as the backfill because the incorrect plumbing was used and it wasn't supported with plumbing straps. I'm gonna go right into the next element, which is going to be the fact that we're going to encase this plumbing with clean crushed stone. This material is gonna come all the way up. So it's actually gonna envelop the plumbing itself, which will be supported under its own structural rigidity by plumbing straps and the clean crushed stone. All right, let's take a look at the fifth, sixth, and seventh component of the Riverpool's way of installing. This is a dewatering pipe. The dewatering pipe is used to remove groundwater that might be outside of the pool shell in the event that the pool needs to be drained. But you yourself should never, ever drain a fiberglass pool. Always allow a professional to do that. There are cases when it might be necessary. We've got other videos to uh, talk about that, but don't ever drain your pool yourself. When it needs to happen, the pool professionals have the ability to remove water from the outside of the shell using the dewatering pipe. This is an 8 inch pipe that allows a sump pump to be lowered inside of it. And of course, a garden hose will be connected here to allow the water to be pumped away. That will remove hydrostatic pressure from the outside of the shell, making sure that everything, uh, all the, in the integrity of the entire shell remains intact when the pool needs to be drained at some point. Let's take a look at the next component, which is going to be connecting the pool itself to the deck so that the patio never gets separated from the pool shell. The River Pool's way of installing fiberglass pools is really a series of best practices, but also a system of redundancy. So we're gonna take all of the things necessary to properly install a pool, and then we're gonna go a couple steps further, and this is one of those elements. We're gonna place a series of these composite rods, we call them river rods, throughout the perimeter of the pool, and they're gonna be drilled into the coping here, and then the concrete collar and decking is going to come around and envelop this, and it's going to attach the concrete deck to the pool coping itself, so that the two can never be separated from each other. And the last element of the River Pool's way, installing fiberglass pools, is going to be to pour a concrete collar around the entire coping. Now this collar is gonna be 12 inches deep, and what this coping or what this collar does is it ensures that the, the perimeter of the pool remains the exact shape that the pool has and is designed to have. So in the cases of freeform pools, that pool will never change shape. It also helps make sure that the straight edges on linear or rectangular pools always remain straight. So we've gone over two big things today. Number one, the series of problems and challenges we dealt with all of those years that led up to the development the River Pools Way Advanced Fiberglass Pool Installation Methodology. With those seven elements in place, when your fiberglass pool is installed, you can be sure that your pool will not have those issues that we dealt with for all of those years. So as you're shopping for an in-ground fiberglass pool for your backyard, ask, is it going to be installed the River Pools Way? If you haven't seen all the videos in this series so far, make sure you go back and watch episodes one through six we're going over all the details in the manufacturing process that'll take you up to today's video about how that pool should be installed. I'm Christian with River Pools. We'll see you in the next video. The last one in this series, catch the wave. I've now I forget my line. This happens all the time. I'll walk back and forth all morning. I'll practice and then camera rolls and I forget the line. Does it happen to you? It happens to me all the time. If sand is used as the backfill material, <coughs> I swallowed a fly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was awful. <laughs> Are we still rolling? So remember, if your pool is
I don't want to say remember. What am I like, uh, infomercial guy? Remember, I'm Billy Mays Hayes. What was that guy's name? Billy Mays? Billy Mays, yeah. Billy Mays, yeah. I even have the beard. <laughs>